Hey everyone, my name is Justin from JustisGood.com and in this video we're going to have some fun recreating this classic album cover in Photoshop. So this is the album Unknown Pleasures by the band Joy Division and even if you've never heard it before, you may have seen this image on a t-shirt or on the internet somewhere. It's become a bit of an iconic album cover. The original is actually some type of frequency chart for some pulsar signals but we're going to have some fun recreating it in Photoshop. So I've opened up a blank canvas here, 5 by 5 inches, and I've just got a solid black background to start. So the first thing we want to do is grab our shape tool. So we're actually going to grab the rectangle tool here and make sure you're working on shape mode and we'll have the fill color set to white. So for the stroke, you want to make sure it's set to none. And now we're going to go ahead and make our top line first. So we'll go ahead and click and drag and then make sure you go all the way to the bottom of the edge of the canvas and you've got a white shape taking up the rest of the space here. The reason we're not using the line tool is because if you want to stay true to the original, you notice that the peaks and valleys on each line, you can't see through behind them. So it's more like a bunch of stacked graphs rather than see through lines. So we've got our rectangle here, and now we want to duplicate it. So I'm going to use Command J on our keyboard, and then we're actually going to double click the shape and make it black. So now we've got a black rectangle on top of a white rectangle, and to create that line, we're going to grab our Move tool, and then just hit the down arrow key once and then twice. So we've got a two pixel line here. So now I'm going to go ahead and hold Shift and grab both my layers here and then right click and rasterize them and then also right click and merge these layers. So now I've got my one line here but it's also got a black fill underneath. So what we're going to do to duplicate this a bunch of times and spread it across the canvas is hold option and command on the keyboard. Also want to hold the shift key. So that's going to move it I think it's like two or three or five pixels at a time but we're gonna go ahead and just hold the down arrow key until we actually hit 25 copies and you can see that we're at 25 here because it says copy 25 now that I have 25 different lines here we want to work on creating a ripple on each of them but before I do that I'm gonna go ahead and hold shift again select all my rectangle shapes here and then hit the new group button. So that's going to create a new group with all 25. I thought a lot about the best way to do this while still keeping it true to the original. This is probably the most reasonable way that I could think of doing it while keeping it efficient. So I'll break it down. I definitely know that I want to use the liquify tool and not a tool like ripple or wave because I want to have control over creating a random peak and valley on each line to keep it true to the original. But I know I can't use an action to randomly generate different liquify tools. But I can use an action to speed up the process. So if we open up the actions window, which is under window actions, we're going to create, I'll just create a new group of actions here just for the sake of this tutorial. And I want to go ahead and click my first rectangle here which as you can see is our top shape or our first line or our top line. So now I'm going to hit the new action button and we're going to call this a uh, ripple. You can call it whatever you want. But once I hit record, Photoshop will start recording everything I do. So I'll hit record and then I'll go to filter, liquify. Now I don't actually want to create any adjustments while I'm recording because we want to be able to do a different one for each different layer. So what I'll do is I'll just click anywhere, but I won't make an adjustment to kind of trick Photoshop into thinking I did something. So I'll go ahead and select OK now. And then next, I want to tell Photoshop to grab the next layer above it. But I don't want to just click on that layer, because then that'll specifically grab rectangle 1, copy 2, which is the name of that layer, and there's only one of those. What we can do instead is hold the Option key on our keyboard and hit the right bracket key. 
that's just going to tell Photoshop to select the forward layer or the layer above the current one. So we're not going to run into any annoying pop-ups or errors. So now you can stop recording and then make sure you hit this little checkbox next to the liquify step. That's going to tell Photoshop every time you reach this step, open up the dialog menu and allow the user to make the adjustments by hand. So now that we have our two, act our two steps to our action set up, that'll take care of one layer, but we made 25 layers. So here's where we had to do a little bit of hand work and a little bit of math, but it was the most reasonable way I could think of doing it. We're going to go ahead and hold shift and select both of these steps in this action and then hit the drop down menu and duplicate these steps. So I just want to create 25 different liquefies. So I'll duplicate until I'm at 5. And then just using a little bit of math, I'll reselect everything. So now I have 5, now I have 10, 15, 20, and 25. So we've got this big long, big long action here, and it's just going to liquefy 25 layers, and it's going to save us from having to go to filter, liquefy, next layer. It's going to save us a bunch of button clicks. So we're going to go ahead and get started here, and this is where... Just gonna have to have a little bit of fun and it may be a little tedious, but we're gonna go ahead and select our first rectangle, select our action, and press play. So you're gonna see that's gonna open up the liquify menu, and now you can start making your ripples. So here's where the key of this effect comes in. You want to just use a size um, of about maybe 300. You can adjust it because the original has different ripples, but we're going to go ahead and create a different little bit of peaks and valleys for each one. And remember, the edges of the original don't really have much on them. And then there's like usually a peak on the left and the right. And then we'll go ahead and click OK. And you'll see since we're running the action, Photoshop will just automatically go to the next slide. It's like, it's like doing slides. So we're going to go ahead and just do this 25 times. So making sure to create a different effect every time and then I'll see you guys when I reach the 25th slide. Alright so that just took about five minutes to do and we've got our 25 different ripples here and it's pretty simple from here we're just gonna minimize our group and then we're gonna hit command J to duplicate it and then we'll drag it down. So now we've got 50 and then we'll highlight both of them and we'll hit command J one more time and we'll drag it down one more time and now we've got 100 different lines which is about the right length. Um, so you can see it's much easier doing it in sets of 25. If you really didn't want to have so much duplication um, you could go ahead and maybe flip one group horizontal, like edit, transform, flip horizontal, and that kind of breaks up the monotony a little bit. Or you could do each layer by layer, but this saves us a lot of time from having to do a hundred different liquify strokes. So now we have our line set up, we're going to go ahead and just to get even more confusing here, we're going to select all our groups together, we're going to create a new group out of that so now we have everything in one group and then we're gonna hit command T to open up the transform menu and holding shift I'm gonna stretch the sides in also hold alt to stretch it in from both sides so we're gonna stretch it in just just like the original it's kind of in the center and then we're gonna let go press enter and there we have our final effect. I think it came out really cool. It's very similar to, to the original. It all depends on how much time you take with the liquify tool and how precise you are. As you can see, I, I may have been a little bit sloppy and I could have probably done it a little bit better, but this is a really cool final image to look at. It's really visually interesting and it's a cool uh, recreation of this classic album cover.
So if you guys enjoyed this video, please let me know below. Um, leave me a thumbs up if you did like the video and if you learned a few tips or tricks. If you have any questions or comments or maybe an idea on a way that you would have did it differently, feel free to leave them below. I'll check out all of them. And of course, please subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for more. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.